This is PC747, bringing you the latest in tech. Starting today's series called What's in Your Hand. You have the smartphone in hand. Kind of want to get a, an idea where it came from, the history. That's what this series is about. We're going to start with the Google Pixel line of phones. So the Google line of phone actually start back with the Nexus One. So Google sought HTC, the same manufacturers who made their G1, which is the first Android phone, to create a phone for them that they want to make a, as a reference device for manufacturers and developers out there. This phone would be what Google envisioned in a phone. In other words, what this phone can do. do it. Great as the hardware, or the best hardware, and software in a phone, so that other manufacturers get an idea of kind of what they can do. At the time, it had a rocky start because of some fact how it was sold. Most people wasn't used to buying a phone online. They wanted to go into a carrier store to buy the phone. But in general, it still did what it's supposed to do. It made its mark, and it continued on today. The main reason why, because, well, when it comes to Android software, you're not gonna find a better software experience than with pure Google. And you don't get that unless you have a Nexus or now a Pixel. So pretty much your Pixel started from the Nexus. Google had the Nexus all the way up to the Nexus 6P. And they wanted to rebrand the Nexus to be more of a flagship. And that's where you got your Pixel on the phones. So, pretty much, if you want the best software experience for Android, you actually got to go straight to Google, and you got to go to the source, and their source right now is their Pixel phones. Even though you have other hardware manufacturers out there, like Samsung, which, when it comes to hardware, I got to give Samsung credit. They put out the best Android hardware in a smartphone. When you look at it, it feels premium. You get top-notch specs such as a lot of RAM, a lot more than most people even need in a phone. You get storage, a lot again, a lot more than most people need in a phone, but it feels premium. A criticism that I do have for the Google Pixel line of phones. But when it comes to software, that's when those two really separate from each other. So Samsung, they don't really use pure Android. They take Android and they put their own software, which they call TouchRidge, on top of it. Now, it allows them to customize the experience for users, giving them what they feel is a better overall look. And in some areas, it brings them a, a experience that they're not gonna get with pure Google. In other words, it gives them different colors, it gives them uh, software integrations that, let's be honest, um, Samsung, one of the first ones that came up with uh, the Zoom feature, or picture in picture as well as some of the health apps they have and more it took Google years to finally get to the point where they have their own software and Samsung had that years before but where Samsung suffer is with the overall feel of the software it has a problem with lagging especially after using for six or seven months now some would say that well the latest Samsung phones actually improved on that it got enough hardware specs to actually run smoother. Though, I do know a customer who had a Samsung S9 and she was not too happy with it because of the simple fact that it lacked. And I can say that that's one thing I can say that I love about Android phones when it comes from Google. They don't lag. I didn't have that issue of lag with my Nexus 6, my 6P, or any of my Pixel phones. It just works, it's smooth. I'm getting the same experience that Apple uses to get when they have an iPhone. That 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 smoothness, that that everything works. I get that with my Google phone, and that's why me personally I choose Pixel because yeah, I want a software experience with Android that mirrors what you can get with an iPhone. And like I said, you can't get that with Samsung. You can't get it with HTC. Motorola is close, but they're not quite there. The only way you're gonna get it. Is to Google. The other thing, updates. That's another thing that I have a problem with Samsung. 
Samsung don't really like to update their phones that much. They've been criticizing with that for years. You buy a Samsung phone, it may take like six or seven months before you get your first real update, and then you still feel like you're behind. Like, let's take right now my latest Pixel. It's running 9.0. I guarantee you that a lot of you out there, at the time of me recording this video, your Samsung, if you're lucky, have 8.1. More likely, it has 8.0. That's almost a whole build behind. And in fact, if it wasn't for Google really pushing it on uh, their hardware manufacturers to push out security updates, they wouldn't even do that that well. So, the only reason we're starting to see your, your security updates regularly is because Google mandated it. And this is why people like me, even though I love what Samsung is doing in the hardware department, I do not want to spend that type of money on a Samsung phone because I don't feel like they really support their phone. Not enough for me to buy it. But I gravitate towards Google because I'm able to see what Google has really done with their software. And they've really done a great job over the years. And they constantly improve. We've seen many areas they improve. Let's take that camera. I mean, Google, when you talk about camera, they was like something you laughed at. Now, it's one of the best camera software overall on a smartphone. It's like they finally figured out how to take software and hardware and bring it together to a point where you got the best experience. And you're not going to find it with any other man manufacturer when it comes to Android. Because, well, when it comes to software, Google knows it. And we're seeing that with a lot of the Pixel phones today. Now, if I do want to criticize them in one area, to be fair, it is their hardware. And what I mean by that is, look, they're constantly improving on it, and I give them kudos for that, but they need to do a little bit better. Now, when they launched with the Pixel, I a lot of people gave them slack on a simple fact that they put out a phone that felt dated. You had Apple and the iPhone, Samsung with the latest Note. It was water resistant. And Samsung and a lot of other manufacturers as far as Android got to the point where they took a lot of the bells off and gave people more screen. Google didn't quite do that with the Pixel. Now to be fair, it was HTC's phone. A phone that pretty much HTC took off of the shelf and pretty much built for Android for the Pixel. So because of that, People gave Google a little slack for it. We said, okay, we'll, we'll let that slide. But then we got to the 2XL and the 2. Now, I'm going to leave the 2 out for a second and talk about the 2XL. Because I want to give a credit for one thing. As far as hardware, they did learn from last year. They gave us more screen, gave us front-facing speakers. As far as the overall design, it was awesome as far as the look. And really, it, you know, I felt like it was a really good phone it could have been the best phone of that year if it wasn't for one issue and that was the display quality them choosing LG for the display and it having that blue tint washed out look it's like Google your quality department needs to do a better job of picking that up especially when you want to charge people $900 plus for a phone and here we are this year with the 3XL now they learned from last year with the display and they got that right, going Samsung. And they kept the same hardware design as the 2XL because it did work. But when it comes to RAM, it's like, why did you leave the RAM off? When you have more companies out there putting out games, especially like Fortnite, that you can play on your phone, you're going to need the extra gigabytes of RAM. And if you got a lot of these gaming phones out there that are charging less than you are for your Pixel, and they're putting six and eight gigabytes of RAM on their phone so it can handle the load of gaming, people are wanting to know why you couldn't do the same. At least I am. So that's my one criticism with Google. They need to do a better job of making sure that if they're gonna charge $900 for a phone, to make sure their hardware, as far as specs, are at least up to par with what the competition is putting out there. Overall, when it comes to a Pixel phone though, I choose that phone because, yeah, if I want the latest of software experience. And 
I don't think you're going to get that anywhere else. Not when it comes to Android. Not unless we can get another manufacturer up there to step up and give us a phone that allows to get updates on a timely basis similar to what a Pixel phone do. If we do, then not go that way. Until then, I actually like what Google does with the Pixel as far as software. So if you have a Pixel phone, you kind of want to know why it's so popular, why are people so hyped up about it? Well, this is why. Because of software. You're not going to find a better software experience with Android than with Google and the Pixel. And we are starting to see that now with the Pixel 3 and 3XL. This is BC747. I'm out. Thank you again for watching. Leave your comments below. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel.